Hey everyone, welcome to Aftershoot. In today's tutorial video, we're going over how to cull and edit like a pro in Aftershoot. So to get started in Aftershoot, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is create a new album. This is our import screen. Here you need to decide what exactly you wanna do inside of Aftershoot. First and foremost, you need to decide, are you culling or are you editing only? If you have your raw images on hand, you can both cull and edit or either inside of Aftershoot. If you only have the smart previews available in your Lightroom catalog or you're using Capture One, you're gonna go ahead and click the edit only button. Here you'll find the cull and edit button, and down below you'll find your Lightroom or Capture One catalog button. We're gonna get started by doing a culling and editing project. And I'm gonna choose which files I want to import. Now I can drag and drop files into Aftershoot if I'd like. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and just pick out a set of images to run the culling and editing on. We highly recommend using the ingest feature and backup feature of Aftershoot if you're culling from a memory card. And this is because all of that data being transferred back and forth tends to wear the memory cards out quicker. Here's where you'll find the toggle for whether or not you'd like to ingest. And here you'll also decide if you wanna ingest them to a single location or if you wanna have a backup hard drive connected as well. I'm gonna browse for the specific files I'd like to bring in, but I could also drag and drop these images right into Aftershoot. Now that I've selected a folder, it's imported the images, and if you notice across the top, there's a rainbow bar that's showing me that the images are processing. From here, I can choose whether or not I want to cull, edit, or both. To get started, we're gonna cull these images by clicking on the cull tab. And this is where I get to make my first key decision. Do I want to have an AI automated cull or an AI assisted cull? In our case, we're gonna go ahead and do an AI automated cull. Next up, I have to choose the genre. And this is extremely important because each genre has different algorithms tailored to selecting the best images in that category. On this screen, I can also choose whether I want less images or more images. So by sliding this one slider down to few, it's automatically going to give me the least amount of images. And if I head to more, it's going to give me more images. And of course, standard would be right in the middle. I can also choose to customize the AI cull. Now, once I've chosen all of the parameters I want to go through, I simply click on start culling and Aftershoot will begin to do its magic. In just a matter of a minute and 15 seconds, Aftershoot reduced 57 images down to 16 for me. Now all I have to do is review the images and then bring them on over to editing. As mentioned, it's going to give you one of everything. These images are marked as warned images. You're gonna notice this little yellow box and it's saying, hey, something's up with this image and we're not quite sure what. I'm gonna enter the loop view and we're gonna see it a little bit more closely. And I'm gonna expand the key face and you'll notice that this key face is definitely not in focus. That warning is telling me, hey, we showed you this photo because you took about five of them, but none of them are in focus. But Aftershoot doesn't really understand why I took five of them. It just knows that I took five consecutive photos that are almost the same. I can hit the X key and get rid of that image and move on to the next one. But if you wanna learn about keyboard shortcuts, we have another video for that for you. I can use my loop view. I can use my survey mode. I have all of these options available to me to tweak and fine tune my cull. And once I'm satisfied with the results of my cull and I've made any changes I want to, I can simply click on save changes and then it's off to editing. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the edit tab and it's gonna prompt me in the same screen to choose which photos I want to edit. First thing I'm gonna do is choose the style I'd like to edit in. So we're gonna edit in my style. Now that I chose my profile, I can also choose what color profile I'd like to use and I also get to choose whether I'd like to crop or straighten. Under crop, you're gonna find two different crop modes. There's the loose mode and the aggressive mode. I also can choose whether or not I want to leave it as the default crop size, or if I wanna have it crop at different aspect ratios. And the next thing I'm gonna do is decide what files I want to edit. And I can do this by choosing these filters. First thing I'm gonna do is deselect all of the filters, and I only wanna edit the five stars in this case, which is a total of those 15 photos that we had selected. If I wanted to edit all of the images, I could simply select all, and it's gonna edit all 57 images. It doesn't really matter as there isn't a price per image, it's really just a preference. Would you like to edit everything or just the selected? All I have to do is click on edit, and these 15 photos are gonna get edited right inside of Aftershoot. Now that my editing is complete, I can choose how I want to open these photos up. 
By clicking on the export button, I can choose to open them in Lightroom Classic or export to a folder. Or one of my favorite things, I bounce back to the cull and I just hand drag these files right down into whatever editing software I'd like to use. So in this case, we're gonna open up Photoshop. It's gonna prompt Camera Raw to open and show me my edited file. And then because I know I wanna edit this softbox out, all I have to do is click on open because the edit looks fantastic. And then I'm in Photoshop ready to edit. I can also do this same process with Adobe Bridge. I'm gonna simply drag and drop them right on down to my Adobe Bridge logo, and it's gonna prompt me to start working on my files inside of Adobe Bridge. As you can see, the image is loaded and it's fully edited and it's ready for me to tweak. Now, if I wanna open the images in Adobe Lightroom Cloud, all I have to do is open Adobe Lightroom Cloud and import the files as I normally would, and all of Aftershoot's edits will import alongside of the images that were culled. The same applies for Adobe Lightroom Classic. I can simply drag and drop my images right into Adobe Lightroom Classic, and it'll prompt me to import those files as well with all of their edits applied. But what happens if they're already in Lightroom? In this case, we're gonna take the same exact files we just edited, and we're gonna edit them again, and we're gonna choose the black and white style. By editing all of my five star photos, my 15 photos, using the founder's black and white style, whenever I read the metadata inside of Lightroom Classic, the edits and the stars and colors will appear. Now that the editing has completed, I'll go into my library mode, select all of the files, and go to metadata, read metadata from the files, and now my black and white edits have appeared. This process would work the same whether or not you're culling a large session or a small session, and whether or not you're editing them. For those using Capture One, here's the workflow you're gonna follow. The first thing I need to do is run my cull. I'm gonna run this on those raw files again. We're gonna import them, and we're gonna go ahead and click on cull, and we're gonna say start culling, and then I'll let the cull complete. Now that my cull is completed and I've made any changes that I see fit, I can simply click on save changes and then export, and I'll have them export to Capture One. I can choose to either export by clicking on the export button and clicking on export to Capture One, or better yet, I can select all and simply drag and drop them. Now that all of my images have imported to Capture One, I'm going to close Capture One and head back to the home screen at Aftershoot. I'm gonna create a new album, and now I'm gonna go edit only. This is gonna allow me to choose which Capture One catalog or session I'd like to use for editing. I'm gonna choose which files inside of the catalog I would like to edit, and I'm gonna head to the Edit tab. This is where I get to choose the AI profile I would like to use for editing. I'm gonna again choose whether I'd like to crop or straighten, and whether I'd like that crop to be loose or aggressive, and whether I'd like to change the aspect ratio. And I'm also gonna choose what filters I'd like to apply to these images. Select all, because I wanna edit all 13 photos, and then I'm gonna click on edit. What this is going to do is process all of my images for me, and then I'll be able to return to Capture One and see my edited files. Now that my editing has finished inside of Aftershoot, I'm gonna simply click on Review in Capture One, and it's gonna open that catalog or session inside of Capture One for me to review. And as you can see, my Capture One catalog has opened up with all of the edits applied in my style. Now, if I don't wanna drag and drop these files into Lightroom, Adobe Bridge, Lightroom Classic, or Camera Raw and Photoshop, I can simply click on the Export button and I can export them to a folder. All of the edits and culling information is gonna go with these files. So the first thing I wanna do is tell it where I want these files to go. We're gonna go ahead and export these to my desktop and I'm actually gonna add a folder name to them. We'll call these Justin's Headshot. And the next thing I need to do is decide how I want these images to be copied or moved. So I only want my selected files, so I'm only gonna have this selected bar highlighted. I also wanna copy the photos, not move them, because I wanna leave the original copy on my external hard drive and bring this brand new copy onto the new hard drive. But if I did wanna relocate the original files, I could choose the move option. Now, I can also choose to rename them if I'd like, so we'll call these Justin's Headshot and we're gonna make it start as 0, 0, 1, and we're gonna sort by capture time, and we're gonna copy those 15 photos. Now these files will go to a brand new folder on my desktop, and I can import them along with their star and color data and all of the edits that we applied in Aftershoot edits as well. We've got you covered with culling and editing. Be sure to check out some of our other tutorial videos to learn how to navigate Aftershoot with more speed and efficiency and learn the best ways to speed up your workflow.